Welcome back to my channel, Don't Be Kurt. And today we're talking about this 2013 Volkswagen Golf R, which I think is very demure and very mindful. What I mean by that, well, of course, that's going to date this video in the future, but what I mean by that is it's the Goldilocks of the hot hatches, meaning it's not too hard, it's not too soft. It kind of fits in that just right category between its all wheel driveness, its power, its comfort all those things and it seems to fit in everywhere whereas you can take this as a executive executive car with a you know very nice clean interior you can take it out to have fun on spirited road trips or spirited you know, rides with your friends you can use this as your point a to point b car since it's a hatchback and you can do all the stuff that a crossover suv can it's a really good platform and i want to get into it and i gotta again thank my friend for letting me borrow this car as i'm out as you can hear all the noise i'm actually at a car meetup so we're going to talk about about this car and talk about why it fits in in every uh, situation that I kind of uh, gave a second ago. So interestingly enough, this Golf R has classic well, Volkswagen interior. I mean, this is pretty much what their early 2010s look like. In fact, when I first got in this car, it reminded me a lot of my uh, Audi I had before. Pretty much everything's in the same location. What I find interesting is the ignition button is where a key used to be, so there wasn't much that Volkswagen did to necessarily differentiate things. Um, Six-speed manual, the engine's a four-speed, um, sorry, four-speed, I mean four-cylinder turbo engine producing around 300 horsepower or so in the uh, Mark VI model, which I believe this is. Six-speed manual, it's a good car. I mean, it's got all the things. I mean, it'll zip when it needs to zip, it'll zag when it needs to zag, and it does all the things. And what I have found is the materials in here aren't too terrible. I mean, the seats are comfortable. The leather is decent material. It's not overly plastic. It has a soft touch plastic up here, soft touch on the dash and stuff like that. It's pretty good. So we're gonna just go for a little ride and I'm gonna show that this car fits in wherever. So you could be uh, somebody who lives in the city and drive one of these where it doesn't stick out. You could be somebody in the suburbs, it doesn't stick out. You can go to your bar, you can go to you know the Ritz Carlton and have this valet. It works. So <clears throat> driving the golf bar. Like I said, it fits in anywhere. Go to your local club in this. So I'm not sure the microphone can pick up the turbo bushes, but they're present. And again, that's where this is such a good balance of a car that they're not aggressively loud. But they're there if you're listening for it. I don't think this is something that um, somebody doesn't want to let that engine noise is going to be too disturbed by. Now, granted, it is a hot hatch, so it's a little bit louder in your regular point A to point B um, crossover and most cars. So you do get a little bit of grunt or whatever from this four cylinder engine. But if you're in this type, in, in it for this type of car where it does a little bit of everything, is that so bad? Again, it never gets old and the smiles per gallon on this car are just, are just great. All right, so pulling up to one of our first stops to get some ice cream. I'm just gonna get out and show again how this car just fits in everywhere. Even though it's a high performance uh, hatch, hot hatch, you can go anywhere and you don't really stick out. So you can drive your golf R, get you some ice cream, know you have probably the, one of the fastest cars in the block, and enjoy yourself. This is just our first stop to show where, why, this very mindful, very demure, 
golf are, fits in everywhere. And I'm gonna enjoy some ice cream. I'm gonna do this one-handed while eating my ice cream. And we're gonna make this two turns. You might say, oh, you didn't make it. I'm telling you, compared to its uh, competition, this is lovely. One-handed. And we are around. Told you. So anyway, the sound system here is fairly modern. It has Bluetooth, um, aux in, no USB though. No CarPlay, no Android Auto, which isn't really a problem considering that auto manufacturers are now going away from that. Um, both the Rivian and Tesla products do not have CarPlay or Android Auto. So, like I'm saying about the Golf R, it's for everybody. For your single guy, it's for a young couple, and it's even for a family. Four adults in here, you think, where, what could a whole family do with this? I'm gonna show you, you can fit two full-size suitcases in here. So, for example, See this suitcase? See me? Yes, I know I'm skinny. This is a full-size suitcase. We're gonna stick it right in here without an issue. And this apparatus is just for security, but you say, hey, family of four, we're gonna need more than one big suitcase. So I got two. And I'm just being a little gentle here. I would normally say just take this part off because take it off some, some space, but we're behind the threshold here and I'm just gonna close the hatch. So, the Golf R, perfect for a family of four, even those who travel. Perfect road trip car, perfect point A to point B car, perfect car for spirited drives on those back roads. Or I should say perfect hot hatch. There's other cars and stuff like that. I'm just saying, I just wanna impress upon you guys that Volkswagen has made the car for everybody. Far from grooving, car for the people. Now, don't dig too deep for the Volkswagen name or whatever to, you'll get to see some bad stuff, but today, car for the people. All right, so what we're talking about here, this um, Golf R fits right in with all of our Golfs. Here's another one on the highway. And as we've seen by the looks already, it just blends right in. And that's what adds to its very demure, very, very mindful um, looks. And just like driving on a highway, this car is also perfectly comfortable in any sort of spirited driving with folks in greater cars like the Ford GT in front of us or the uh, M3 behind us. Fits right in, it's perfect. So I can't demonstrate how well it handles around these ramps, these exit ramps on the highway. But trust me, where this is not a thing for this car at all, as you notice, the guy in front of me checking his brakes up because why not? It's you know, probably a little scary. And hopefully they go straight, but I won't be that lucky. So we'll go the way I don't like to go just to kind of demonstrate some turns.
just like in any town, the one you were spotting to get is no longer available. So we will park, not here because it's a fire hydrant, but we will park right here. I'll have to take my word for it because I'm not going to get my camera out to set it up. But parallel parking in this car is easy because it's so maneuverable. And I'll show you in a second that again, even in the Golf R here in any town USA, in a sea of crossover SUVs, you can fit right in and nobody would think any different. And just like that, we're in. As of my theme has been with this video, this very demure, very mindful hot hatch fits in everywhere. 300 horsepower, can beat any of these crossovers point A to point B, stylish, plenty of room. Why just do something boring? Have some fun while still having a very, very capable vehicle, the Golf R. And this just right here just shows you this is what we have. Crossovers everywhere, which to me, and I'm gonna get out of frame here, is odd as hatchbacks were kind of canceled, but now we have all these crossover SUVs everywhere, which are effectively big hatchbacks. Doesn't make sense to me, but we're gonna keep going to show how this is perfect and the goalie locks. Now I could get on a soapbox about hatchbacks and crossovers, whereas um, in the 80s, hatchbacks seemed to be more prevalent along with station wagons, and then somehow both went out of style, only to come back now where we have a world of crossovers being the de facto standard here, at least in the US markets. And it's puzzling to me, I've heard a lot, mind you, I used to have small children, and I've heard the stories of, oh, it's much easier to get kids in and out of cars and stuff like that, these crossover SUVs. And I have to challenge that a little bit, because not all of them are super high off the ground. I think folks are selling themselves short as what they're capable, capable of doing. And the storage is already, as I'll show, in this car is pretty decent and probably better than what some of these smaller crossovers are, like the Toyota Corolla Cross or even the previous gen Chevy Trax in terms of storage amount. And definitely um, like a Mini Cooper Clubman. Um, so it's a little bit puzzling to me that this that folks have now defaulted to what I call gigantic hatchbacks. Um, whereas we had these things um, back in the 80s, much more prevalent between the, the Dodge Omni GLH. We had, uh, of course, the Golf never went away, so it was always there. We never got the BMW 1 Series in hatchback form because of the US market. Um, but somehow we have settled on crossovers. Weird to me because I think these are probably more economical fuel-wise and maneuverable and uh, like I said, I don't see you get that much of a vantage point on some of these crossover SUVs. Yeah, sure, certainly some of them are taller, but not all. So like I was saying, the Golf R fits in everywhere. You can take it to fancy dining places. You can take it out to a bar. You can go get ice cream in it. And no matter what car is around it, is never quite out of place because the Volkswagen built a timeless car that just fits in everywhere and it's pretty cool you know right now we're just downtown and I'm just stopping here in a, a nice area to just kind of check things out and I don't feel any sort of way even as I passed that G-Wagon and my final stop on this tour of what makes a golf bar fit in everywhere with its very mindful, very demure self is academia. So this is the car most people probably associate with a Volkswagen owner, but not necessarily a hot hatch. But yet here we are. You probably see plenty of golfs. You probably see other of those type of variant cars here. And this car would just sneak right in. Nobody's got to know you have 300 horsepower. Nobody's got to know you have all wheel drive and that you can launch and you can take off. This is a track worthy car, good for point A to point B. It does it all. And I just wanted to tell everybody about it. And another question, would I buy this car? Absolutely. Um, a different phase of my life, this would be the car I'd have. Um, I, I enjoy this car 
immensely. It's very utilitarian, very sporty. If you could only have one car to do everything, this is it. Um, I like all day raw.